Okay, well, welcome back. Uh, you may recall that last time we mentioned that George Peel's handwritten note to Lord Burley, who happens to be Oxford's father-in-law, had a line in it that said, this note is going to be delivered by, quote, my eldest daughter. So we established that Oxford had the requisite number of daughters. He had three to produce an eldest. And we also established that his eldest daughter, Elizabeth, was visiting him in Hackney in August of 1595. And she was there without her husband, who was staying at home with Burley. So she was in a perfect position to be delivering a note back home. Uh, so the question naturally arises, did the actual George Peel have three daughters and might one of them have been available just as, as well? Well, we noted that there's absolutely no knowledge about George Peel's uh, life and, and doings whatsoever. But I found out that's not quite true. There's actually positive evidence that he did not have the requisite daughters. As it turns out, David Horn went through all of James Peel's notes of his family and he put them in a diagram. James Peel was George's father. He lived until the final, almost the final day of 1585, as you, as you can see there on the left, he died on December 30th. And he kept records of his kids. He kept records of when they uh, got married and when they had kids and so on. So he showed all of the grandchildren that he had or kept records of all of them. And you can see that for George, there were none. George was married in 1580. So he'd been married five to six years already. And that implies, particularly in those days, that he was headed to a, a completely childless marriage or certainly childless up to that point. Now, someone might say, well, Suppose she was eight months pregnant and she delivered a, a daughter, you know, shortly after James died and then produced more daughters. The problem with that is that the eldest would have only been nine years old in January 1596. And I think that's pretty young to have be sent across town uh, delivering a note all by your little self. So I think we've pretty well established that Oxford is a much better candidate here for having had an eldest daughter who delivered the note. Now, there was another interesting aspect to George's letter, which is that when W.W. Gregg reproduced it in his book, Literary Autographs, about 100 years ago, he covered up the bottom left corner of the letter to paste on an excerpt from Anglorum Ferii that he had access to. Unfortunately, that left some pretty interesting information out of the picture. And now we're going to look at a copy of the letter that is complete. And you can see down in the lower left, there's a Latin couplet that we had not previously examined. As it turns out, and if you recall, we had looked through the entire letter in English and found that uh, virtually every line of it echoed uh, passages, a passage from Shakespeare. And we came up with uh, well more than, uh, I think 10 or 15 that were not just words that are similar in Shakespeare, but really interesting and, and sometimes unique constructions that were in Shakespeare. What about the Latin couplet? Well, here it is, and here is my attempt at translating it. Peel wrote, lo, I send you nothing great as a gift, anything it may be, take it as nothing. Did Shakespeare echo that idea? Well, it turns out he did. In Cymbeline, a character speaks of that nothing gift. And once again, this is a bit of an unusual thing. People don't go around every day talking about gifts that are nothing and nothing gifts and so on. But George Peel and Shakespeare had that very idea in their heads. Now, there's something else in the bottom left of the note that we did not discuss. And it's that signature swirl that looks a bit like a tornado that George Peel's note has at the bottom. Has anyone seen anything like that before? Well, it turns out we have. Michael Delahoy took a trip to Italy to track down evidence of the Earl of Oxford's visit there. And when he visited Venice, he found a permission slip that the Earl of Oxford filled out when he visited the Doge's Palace in Venice. And he took a picture of it. And here it is. 
And I think it's wonderful that it also displays that beautiful signature swirl, looks a little like a tornado right at the bottom, just as George Peel did on his note to Lord Burley. And there's one other spot where it shows up. It happens to be on the receipt signed by George Peel in 1583 for the expenses related to producing William Gager's Dido. And we can see that on the left, we have Oxford at Venice in 1575, giving us that signature swirl. Peel at the University of Oxford in 1583, and Peel in his note to Burley in 1596. So that concludes all the evidence I have. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I hope you agree that this is a pretty strong indication that the Earl of Oxford wrote the note and had his eldest daughter deliver it to Lord Burley. So once again, I wanna thank the Shakespeare Authorship Roundtable for hosting this. And for those of you who might be interested, uh, my chapter on George Peel is 71 pages in Oxford's Voices and I not only cover his rather suspect biography, but also all 17 of his extant works. So come take a look if you like. And thanks very much for the forum.